So, continuing with uh, PRA techniques, participatory rural appraisal techniques, today we will be discussing some more aspects and techniques of participatory rural appraisal. One of them is folklore, songs, poetry and dance, the cultural aspect of PRA and it is very, very important. If you see that every states of our country, India or every you take for any other country, Europe or United States of America, every place has its own food habit, own dance, music, dress. So, these all those things actually also comes under the PRA technique because as I mentioned at the beginning that participatory rural appraisal is a technique which involves people and it is with the people. So, folklore especially you know in our country as all of you know that various parts of our country has different different types of folklore which are part of our life. So, that can also be effectively used for participatory rural appraisal. Now, some of the things which are actually you know people often ask that how they would like the things in future in their village or in their community means what are the possibility that they anticipate within a time frame in future could happen. So, some kind of prediction what will happen if suppose everything goes business as usual means there is no kind of extra input into the system. If the way today everything is happening, if it goes in the same way, then how you feel that suppose within a year or six months something can happen in future. So, a kind of a prediction, prediction with relation to their desire, wishes, expectations which can also help in long run for a better policy making. Diagrams is very, very critical for PR exercise I mentioned earlier also. So, this kind of techniques using diagrams and maps, charts, photographs are very, very you know efficient techniques for PRA exercise because this brings in lot of information and it also brings out the information from the system for the people who actually are carrying out this exercise and thus it will also go for a better policy making. Shared presentations and analysis technically as, as all of us we know that it is very important for any kind of exercise to carry out information about an area. Often the participants in PRA exercise are encouraged to present their findings to the other villagers who are actually attending that PRA exercise or even to outsiders and that also gives an opportunity for other villagers or community people to interact, to correct, to modify the information which has already been gathered through the PR exercise. So, in a sense shared presentation gives you an opportunity for corrections, night halts. You might be thinking that why I am putting this point here. I can give one of my own, own experience that I, I, I would like to share with you. I was working uh, in you know Korapur district in Orisha in the eastern part of India that in one of the project where we were working with community for you know livelihood enhancement through through watershed management approach going there i found that only visiting that area during the daytime will actually give me half story so to, to understand the entire dynamics of that particular village where i was working it was important for me to stay at least to one night in that village. So, it is encouraged that if any one of you in future is involved or going to get involved into a PR exercise, please note that night provides you lot of extra information that probably will enhance the quality of your PR exercise by multiple times. So, living in the village during this you know research process of peer exercise, it facilitates some kind of special interaction during the evening time which probably in the daytime you may miss it. It also allows you to see that how the early morning because in village especially in the villages 
early morning is very very critical unlike city their day starts very early in the morning so to capture the activities of the villagers or village community it is very important to be there right at the early morning and also join the evening discussions over a cup of tea so those those uh, you know leisure time discussions can only be possible when you decide to stay at least one night in the village where you have gone for a peer exercise short questionnaire is we have already discussed that yes it helps and uh, short questionnaires also it comes quite effectively under rra rapid rural appraisal field report writing of course it is important survey of villagers attitudes towards the pra is very very important means when we you will go first time to a area and you start your pra activities you will find some kind of you know resistance also from the community because the uh, largely the rural communities they are very protective about their uh, suffering also they don't want to like to share so uh, about their kind of difficulties that they are facing that also they don't want to share very easily so a kind of rapport building is very very important so before you start you know this activity in a full phase it is important to understand the villagers attitudes towards the pra so first make them ready for that and then go for the exercise that is what i would say next the organizational techniques now this is another very important aspect of participatory rural appraisal that organizations of this entire system pr exercise system it is important for your success of this exercise to develop a quality report which ultimately would lead to some uh, you know policy uh, preparation or policy document so organizational techniques first is selection of pra team members very very important selection of pra team members will decide the success of your pra exercise the objectives for which actually you are going to the field for this pra exercise what are the different sub topics that you would like to address going into the village or going into that particular area interview how many when with whom how these are the things that you need to take care sub team meeting is very very important you know suppose you have 10 10 members in a pr a team so it is beneficial sometimes that you divide that uh, you know 10 members team into suppose 2 uh, to 3 members in each group looking at particular aspect and then kind of a break up meeting you sit there separately discuss uh, you know deliberate and then come out and again join and then that actually fruitful whole team meeting after this sub team meeting as i said that you come back and meet all together and then finally you progress you know towards the report writing exercise tools very very important some of the tools i mentioned earlier while introducing pra you know technique to you so in pra nowadays we have a kind of a standard toolkit which can broadly be classified or explained into eight major tools which are required for effective pra exercise to be carried out at any site first semi structured interviewing i will discuss each one of this in detail in a couple of minutes second maps very important timelines we must have timelines for each of the you know component or exercise or techniques that you are going to apply for this peer exercise time charts of seasonal calendars for various activities even for suppose agricultural practices on crops we should have some kind of crop calendars uh, study under this uh, pra exercise ranking very important ranking of household income ranking of agricultural production ranking of academic uh, status so these all will actually help you know for policy development venn diagram is very very important and often used for such kind of exercise structured direct observation 
structure direct observation means what you see right there in front of your eyes. So, that will you know immediately give you certain kind of feedback which you can take for you know certain uh, very very pointed policy or action uh, development for future. Key informant interview. Among the various uh, informant means the villagers who will be helping you in this exercise, you need to choose one or two very smart people, smart uh, person from the community who actually will provide you the final touch to the entire information that you have gathered. So, one by one now I will go this eight major tools. Semi-structured interviewing system SSI. What is the purpose? The purpose is to gain information from an individual or small group on a particular issue. Very clear? So, you will try to get information from one individual or a small group of individual on a particular issue. Now, what actually you do under semi-structured interviewing system? Basically, you carry out a guided conversation where very broad questions are asked to the people, which generally allow them to talk about many other things apart from the particular aspect that you are interested for. So, that means it provides that particular candidate that you are interviewing enough opportunity scope to tell you something plus to the particular information that you are looking for. So, probably that would lead to a new set of questions and some further discussion. So, this is different from the questionnaire survey. Semi-structured interviewing is more kind of open-ended and as I said that you give lot of opportunity to the uh, individual to share you know something extra than what actually we are looking at. A semi-structured interview is therefore relatively informal and a relaxed kind of discussion environment that you provide to the candidate. It also engages uh, villagers in a conversation through a series of guided questions, but not structured questionnaires. Structured questionnaires actually will have some you know number of questions and those questions pointed questions will be asked and sir will be achieved. But here it is more open kind of uh, discussion that you are you are giving a direction and then you are listening more than what actually you need the information. SSI can be used with individual key informants, interest groups or other small groups of villagers like self-help group, SHGs or any kind of women group. So, this actually helps you to get lot of information apart from the one that you actually want for. The procedures, how actually it work? First, we need to prepare a checklist of topics, some guide questions for the discussions and then record this in a notebook. Sometime people also carry some pocket you know recorder system, but I would like to suggest all of you that before you use those kind of recording system, you must take permission from the people, permission from the community that you are interacting with. We must respect their privacy and, and their permission approval for the entire system to take place. Selected individuals, key informants, interest groups and other small groups from villagers we need to interview under SSI and try to get a kind of a good representation of the village of that area across you know uh, special dimension, gender, financial condition etcetera. Then use the checklist of topics uh, and guide questions, but as I said that allow enough flexibility to carry on the conversation in much more relaxed manner because that is the way you will get you know as I said that your wanted information plus something more. Probe. Now, this is a sensitive procedure. We need to probe, but in a very uh, sensitive manner. So, to find out a particular information from the, from the community. So, that could happen instantly at that particular moment. Suppose you ask a question to the person, he or she answers you and that lead to the another questions and then you start guiding him or her 
towards that direction and this thing has to take place in a very organic manner. Entire process is very, very organic in nature and one has to really uh, move with the flow in this kind of relation. Ask questions that are relevant to the villagers, it is important. We cannot ask, uh, we are carrying out PRA in Rajasthan and we are asking some question which is about flood. So, certainly you know uh, that would be little bit, uh, little bit awkward for them and same way if you come to northeast in Assam and you ask the villagers something related to you know uh, acute drought. So, those things we need to keep in mind, use open ended questions, record the important points in notebook and modify the checklist, modify the checklist topics, guide questions, new issues during the conversation as I just now mentioned that it will evolve with the conversation. Now, the next tool is maps. Participatory mapping is one of the most versatile tools and it is powerful in generating kind of pictorial explanations of the resources and pictorial or graphical representations of the situations of a particular area that you are actually working with. And these maps, these maps can be produced using different you know uh, advanced software, but at the same time when you go to the ground level try to utilize the local locally available material to come out with some maps maybe right on the floor where you are having the meeting discussions because that somehow generate a kind of a involvement kind of a ownership among the community. But if you carry a Apple laptop and sit in front of them and use suppose you know ArcGIS or something and try to do mapping in that manner probably that may not be appreciated by the community that you are interacting with. So, the point is that even utilizing those locally available material you will get the same kind of information, same quality of information provided you guide them in the right direction. So, products of you know this participatory mapping exercise and then you know documentation of mental mapping, mental mapping is very important can be different to different group of people within same village. It could be very, very different from one tribal group to the other tribal group, one community to the another community. So, do not get surprised that within one village you are getting two different set of you know uh, information, these are treasure. So, you must be open to this kind of you know differences within one you know geographical unit then this is the beauty of, of participatory rural appraisal exercise. So, the participatory mapping as I said that mostly we use two kind of you know participatory mapping, one is social mapping and the other is resource map, social mapping and resource mapping. These are the two most commonly used. Now, let us discuss about social mapping. What are the objectives of social mapping? Social mapping is an exercise to learn about the social behaviors, gestures of the village villagers or village community and also the differences among various groups, religion, ethnicity, financial differences. So, this allow you to understand the social fabric of an area where you have gone to carry out a peer exercise. It also allows you to learn that who are the people living there that you are going to deal with. It also allows you to learn about the different institution at the village level, different kind of institutions, their functionalities, their views and their um, way of functioning. These all actually allows you to come out with a uh, you know better result under uh, peer exercise. So, in case of social mapping basic questions that you need to keep in mind to guide the uh, participants in the right direction are like the followings. First, what are the apps approximate boundaries of your village with regard to you know different uh, social interaction and services. Second, 
how many households are found in your village and how they are located. Third, is the number of households growing or shrinking over a period of time? Fourth, what are the social structures and institutions found in your village? Next, what religious groups are found in your village? What are the ethnic groups are found in your village? Then, which are the female headed households and where are they located? This is a very critical information, uh, especially for uh, rural community and uh, rural uh, social fabric. So, these are the some of the key questions uh, that we, we carry out during social mapping. How can you facilitate this social mapping process? You need to first you know start uh, asking the participants to draw a map of his or her own village and then showing the households. It is very easy for them you know. I have seen that I have carried out many peer exercise in many parts of the country starting from south, northeast and uh, western part, northwestern part of India. So, more or less most of the places villagers they are well capable enough to draw their own village, their resources, their households beautifully utilizing their locally available material. Discuss whether the total number of households has increased over a period of time, if there is any change or specific reasons that why this change has taken place, whether this change has caused a certain kind of problems or some kind of issues or hurdles for only a uh, specific group of people or families. Then you can ask the group to show the different institutions, social institutions, suppose village development councils, water user group, various you know institutions at the village level, buildings like health center, school, if they have any kind of uh, village uh, knowledge center, uh, whether people go there on regular basis, discuss about their issues. So, this will also give you uh, some kind of uh, information about the social uh, dynamics and the fabric of a particular area. You should encourage the group to discuss and show on the map which different ethnic groups are living in their village and which part of their village and try to use you know some common uh, symbol or marks to differentiate between you know different household. So, this actually uh, will lead you a really a good PRA exercise. Ask the group and to indicate with a symbol on the map all household that are female headed. Next is a resource mapping exercise. Now, what are the objectives for resource mapping exercise? It is to learn the villagers perception of what natural resources are found in, in the community and how they are being used. And to do that like social mapping you also need to ask couple of questions. And what are those? Number one, what resources are abundant and what is in scarce? Very simple question, any villager will be able to answer, but that will give you a very, very valuable information to come up with your PRA uh, report. Second, does everyone have equal access to land? See you are bringing in the land accessibility, land related issues here. Do women have access to land? Who makes the decision on land and location? Where do people go to collect water? And this gives some information about distance, largely women go for fetching water. So, that can also talk about that how much time they actually spend behind this kind of exercise. So, this is there about daily calendar which uh, helps to also decide about women role in the development of an area. Who collects water? Where do people go to graze livestock within the village, outside the village? What kind of development activities do you carry out as a whole community and where? Then which resource do they have the most problem with? Water, soil, plants, fish, livestock. So, these are very common issues, questions which any commune villagers will be able to answer you, but that will give you a kind of a solid base for preparing a wonderful PRA report. Resource mapping, 
how you facilitate resource mapping. Mapping normally as I said that it is done with you know a group of people separate groups of men and women in a village uh, because you will find that uh, in case of resource mapping women and men they use different types of resources and the way they perceive that a value of utility of a resource is quite different. Okay? So, it is important for us that in a PR exercise we have a, a little separate groups of men and women to carry out this resource mapping exercise. The women will map uh, you will see that resources they think according to them they think that important. What will be those? Certainly water will be number one, then firewoods it has to do with cooking, food, maintaining of house right. And the men you will see that they will say like you know grazing land, pasture, infrastructure. So, the resource mapping exercise if you carry out making women and men little separately it would give you a better outcome. So, what are the resource map may include infrastructure like roads, houses, buildings, bridges, etcetera, school, health center, water sites like pond or tanks in South India people call it, agricultural land, what kind of crop varieties, locations, soils, what kind of soils you have because that also decide that whether you need you know apart from rain you need little bit of irrigation, slope of land that will decide your rate of erosions, elevations, forest land, grazing areas, shops, markets, health, clinics, schools, churches, special places like you know cemeteries, bus stops, this all information together they will give you a kind of a excellent foundation of a, a very quality PRA report. Next is timeline, very very critical for PRA exercise. What actually in timeline we need to do? The facilitators like suppose you and me who go for to carry out the peer exercise, we need to meet a small group of villagers and then discuss with them that the most important you know exercise or event taken place in the community in the past few months or a year and then you prepare a kind of a historical timeline of events for that particular area. What it does? It serves as the base for your further planning that you would like to do because if you know the history of that particular area over a period of time then you can actually plan efficiently that in which direction for that particular area you would carry out your peer exercise. It is important for us to involve different groups of communities to get different perspectives. So, time and again I am stressing on one point is that different perspective you involve different gender, different religion, different section of people because everyone probably look at one aspect little differently and to come out with a very good PRA report which ultimately will also lead to a very good policy you know making exercise should not ideally miss any kind of perception in a particular area. So, our job would be in that exercise to capture as much possible information as we could do within the given time frame. So, the timeline with basic events can be utilized for a focused discussions on different problems issues in a particular area that could be related to their livelihood, education, health, technology. So, various aspect transport communication. So, basically with this timeline you plan or chalk out your you know strategy for carrying out the PRA exercise. Time charts and seasonal calendars, these are very very important aspect for also a fruitful PRA exercise. What are time charts and seasonal calendars? What they talk about? A seasonal calendar in a PRA method it determines the patterns or the trends throughout the year in a particular area about the cropping system, about land management, various aspects of their life. It can be used for purposes such as rainfall distribution, food availability, agricultural productions, income, expenditures, various other aspects. 
So, time charts and seasonal calendars for an area is very very critical for you know devising any kind of policy tool or intervention. What is the objective? The objective is to learn about the changes of livelihoods over the year and to show seasonality of various aspects of a community, very clear cut objective. Now to do that, what are the questions we are supposed to ask the community that we are going to interview? Very simple questions. What are the busiest months of the year for you? You can ask that question, community people will be very easily able to answer this largely for Indian conditions, you know May, June, July, August is Kharif season in uh, northeastern part of India, uh, we call it Sali rice. So, Kharif season means the rainy season is a, one of the busiest uh, seasons for our farmers. So, because of their farming activity. At what time of the year is food scarce? Okay? When actually uh, you face difficulty with food availability? Next how does expenditure vary over the year for men and women? Then next question is how does rainfall vary over the year? Of course, rainfall you know variations is not in our hand, but it is important for us to track and know the trend because that will help us to decide when and how much to irrigate if at all it is required. Next question, how does water availability for human consumption is required you know or varying over the year. How does livestock forage availability vary over the year? Because livestock is also a very very important component of you know uh, rural community in India and many parts of Indian subcontinent to be you know precise. Then how does credit availability vary over the year? Because See, uh, many activities at the village level, even for simple reason for you know somebody's marriage, they may need credit from someone. So, the requirement of credit can also vary in a season and the availability of credit can also vary in season to season. So, these all time charts or seasonal calendars are very, very important to decide what to do and when to do. Thank you.